Hello, uh, welcome to this video of me doing a sketch. It's a simple side view of a, a Lotus, uh, a Lotus Elite from this 1970s. It was known as the Type 75, I think. Yeah, and maybe a, an 83 later on when it was updated. Um, I thought it'd be interesting to see a video at normal speed. I usually play, I usually put up the time lapse which whizzes past. This is an hour long and it usually whizzes past in one minute. Um, so some people have asked if they could see um, things in real time. So hopefully they'll be watching because it's it's, uh, it's not the most exciting thing to watch, but there might be some useful tips that you'll pick up along the way. <clears throat> so um, I've started doing this thing on, on uh, Instagram called Stefan's Sunday Sketch Challenge. And um, it was just a, another sort of gimmick to get a bit of regular drawing in. Um, so I post um, a suggestion of a type of car on a Sunday and all the people that are taking part, anybody can join in, um, posts their sketch. And it can be a quick one or a longer one, any style, you know, just uh, post it up there. And it's just nice to see lots of drawings of the same subject done in different styles. Um, I picked uh, quite a, we've picked a few sort of 1970s wedges, uh, wedge designs, just because they're, they're easy to draw and they're quite exciting compared to mod modern day blobby cars. Um, so what am I doing? I've started, uh, as you can see from there, first thing I did was drew a wheel and then looking at my reference pictures, I worked out roughly the distance between the front and the back wheel and put the back wheel in. Um, the wheelbase is pretty much the most important proportion of the car, I'd say. So it just defines the length and everything. Um, so it's quite important to get that roughly right. And I think you'll see in a moment, I didn't quite. So uh, after getting the, the wheelbase in, I did the overhangs at the front and back and the, sort of the curve on the bonnet. There's not much of a curve, but there's a slight bend and uh, went for the windscreen and the roof line. And this back bit that I'm doing now, this the, the slope on that back window is one of the most exciting parts of this car. It's kind of, the front end's quite quite normal really, it's not that unusual. Um, but towards the back, it's got this sort of shooting brake design with a hatch and uh, the longer roof line allows you to get another spare pair of seats in the back. So quite a practical sports car. Um, Apparently when it came out, it was one of the most expensive, or well, if not the most expensive four cylinder car that you could buy. So I don't know how many people did buy them. I hardly ever see them anymore. That might be because they weren't particularly reliable. I think the few stories I've heard of people who've had them have said uh, they spent a lot more time off the road than on it, <laughs> which is a shame really, because uh, I'd like to see some of these around. So I'm just sort of getting the basic profile there's sort of silhouette of the car down and my brain is starting to, you can see I've stopped drawing and I'm looking at it and my brain is going it is not quite right is it <laughs> it's too too long so I've reached for the uh, cut tool and I'm, I'm considering chopping the front of the car off and moving it around that's one of the nice things about working digitally is that you can just chop things and scale things undo things um, much more easily than you can traditionally. So I've chopped the front of the car off, sliding it back a bit till it looks right by eye. I could measure it, I suppose, but it wasn't supposed to be t sort of a technical drawing. It was more just something that captured the flavour of the original car. So if you push the proportions a bit here and there, that's that's fine. I made a mistake here. I pasted it, but weirdly it pasted onto the same layer as the one it started on, so I couldn't erase the doubled up bit. <laughs> and it took my brain quite a long time to work out what was going on. So it left bear with me for a bit while I while my um while I try to work out what's going on. No, nope, that's still not it. Scratch my head. No. Nope. Oh look, there's two lines on one layer. Come on, you can get there. Obviously didn't have enough coffee that morning to wake myself up. That's it. Two finger tapping undoes on and 
quite a few drawing apps on the iPad. So you can just tap the screen with two fingers and it will step back through your history of things that you've done. So I went all the way back to where I'd cut the thing and pasted it properly on a new layer, which allowed me to move it into a new position. And then I could switch back to the original layer and delete the doubled up bit, which is what I was trying to do the first time round. There we go. I shouldn't really have been so precious about this because of this this first sketch is really just a rough, which I've, I'm going to um, draw over later anyway. So anyway, there we are. I've got some proportions that I'm more happy with. Um, so I'm using Procreate, um, which I use several drawing programs on the iPad, but this is the one I keep coming back to more than any other. It's just, it has a really uncluttered, in simple interface. It's you, on the left hand side you've got brush size and brush opacity. Um, in the top right corner you've got your drawing tools, your smudge tools, your eraser tools, which all use the same brushes, um, and a color picker. Um, and that's kind of the stuff that you're using all the time. That's it's, um, it's kind of all the stuff you want on the screen at, at once. And then in the top left you've got sort of effects and sort of lesser used filters and the, your basic import and export tools, things like that. Um, so kind of your menus, I suppose they would be normally sort of text menus. Um, they're up on the left, they're lesser used. So mostly you're just using the top right and the, the left hand um, brush size tools. Um, so I'm just dropping in a few more details like the uh, windscreen divisions, the rubber rubber bumpers, the spoilers, door handles. Those door handles look a bit like they might have come off from Morris Marina. Uh, the stuff you see underneath the car, you know, I sometimes see the floor plan or the exhaust sticking out underneath. Just to get a sort of simple diagram of the side of the car. So it's not really three dimensional at the moment. So there's your layers there, that tool there brings up your layers. If you tap on a layer with two fingers, it brings up the opacity and then you can slide your finger side to side and change the opacity of the layer. So that's what I did there. I made my initial drawing um, maybe about 50% opacity, so it's sort of fainter. Made a new layer on top and now I'm concentrating more on making a nice line, sort of getting, trying to get a nice stroke and to do a much cleaner drawing than the first one that was a bit fuzzy. So I'll be doing lots of undoing. I'll, I'll draw a stroke and if it's not quite right I'll undo it and draw it again till I get till I get one and I'm happy with. So there's lots of undoing here. It's, I'm trying to give the impression that I did this just dashed it off in a few minutes and got it perfect first time. You know, with just effortless strokes, <laughs> but um, obviously that's not what happened, and you can see that. So if I was doing this with a pen, then uh, on paper, then I would have to get them right first time, or at least do a, maybe a pencil drawing first and work over the top in pen. It's good practice to do to work with a range of different materials because you can, with something like an, an iPad, where you can undo and redraw and make new layers endlessly, you can end up getting quite noodly and sort of never quite settling for anything and just end, you know, endlessly tweaking stuff. And uh, you can get too tentative almost and maybe even end up getting frightened of using real pens and paper. So it's definitely a good idea to get a Sharpie pen and a sheet of paper out every now and again and make sure that you're still able to uh, make some bolder drawings which you can't change, you know, without an eraser and just go for it. You can hear the next door neighbours starting to mow their lawn. Hopefully that's not coming out too loud. <laughs> it's going to take them a couple of hours, I reckon. So, yeah, 
here, just getting the door shut lines in. Door shut lines are quite useful in that because they tend to wrap around the shape of the car, not so much on a side view, but definitely on a three quarter. They really help describe the, the sort of profile of the car. So this car is quite pronounced or bulge in its in the in the middle line there. And uh, and you can see just that slight kink in the doors helps suggest that that's happening. So they're, they're quite a useful drawing tool, the door shut lines and any other shut lines that there might be. So I've done pretty much everything except the wheel arches. Um, I'll just get that Morris Marina door handle in. Maybe it's from an Allegro actually, was that before the Marina? Ah oh, great, the second lawnmower has just joined in. <laughs> Stereo lawnmowers. This, this has got a, uh, there's a great tool in Procreate for drawing curves, and arcs and circles. So you can draw a rough arc or a circle and if you keep your pen down at the end, you can then um, it will then smooth it out, make it look really nice and smooth. And at the top of the screen, then you have the option of editing it further. So I'll, I'll just you'll see this again on the second on the wheel arch at the back. So let's see. I draw an arch there, keep my pen down, and it tidies up. At the top, you can see edit shape, but I didn't bother that time, so I'll do it again here. Draw an arc as best I can, and it smooths out. And let's see if I do it this time. So edit shape, and then you get a little control point which you can pull around to just further um, shape the arc. That's a really useful thing. And it does the same with um, with ellipses and things, so that's really useful when you come to drawing wheels. So there's another gap while, while I work out what to do next. At this point, it looks like I decided to start a new layer and add some perspective, I think. So I'm just choosing a vanishing point, which is this little dot there on that lower windowsill. And from there, I'm drawing lines out to things in the sort of the corners of the windows, because those are things that you would then be able to see on the far side of the car. They're mirrored on the other side of the car, and because of perspective you will see those slightly smaller in the in the distance and by drawing these radiating lines from the vanishing point that will tell you where where the uh, returns happen on those on those angles you know where the window is horizontal where the where the windows but when where the window is vertical um, so that's what I'm doing there so these are the windows on the far side and the same with the wing mirrors it's a good time to add in steering wheels, seats, anything like that. And I've done the perspective guides on a separate layer, just in case I decide I, I don't want those visible at the end of the sketch. You know, I quite often like to leave those in just because um, it helps reinforce the, the three-dimensional aspect. Um, and the construction of the drawing is all part of it, so it's quite interesting to see, I find. Um, but if you have it on a separate layer, then you've got the option of, of removing it easily. This is um, a perspective line that suggests where the axles would be, um, a line drawn through the centre of the front wheels. So there is a wheel. And although it's a side view, I, have, I haven't made it a perfect circle. I'm using the edit tool to position it it's ever so slightly elliptical not very much and I'm using the minor axis which is ever so slightly smaller than the major axis and positioning it on that axle line that I drew before um, but really I'm, this is a being a side view this there's so little effect of it being an ellipse if the car was turned any more then you'd see that much more it'd be much more apparent so I did one. I did a, an axle line for the back wheel, but I think I ignored it pretty much. I just ended up dropping the copying and pasting the front wheel once I'd drawn that. So there's that uh, helper tool again. 
It really is very useful and it works brilliantly. The useful thing is that it does show you the dots are on the major and the minor axis of the ellipse. Um, if you didn't have those, it would be much harder to place ellipses on a on an axis. And some drawing programs don't always do that very well. So that's one thing Procreate definitely is thought out carefully and helps with. I think I raised my rear axle line perspective guide because it wasn't ended up not being where the wheel was, so I, I, I did it the wrong way around, really. <laughs> but um, often when I'm drawing it, if I'm drawing a car turned rather than a side view, I'm doing a three-quarter view. I'd often start with those two axle lines first, and then put ellipses on for all four wheels, because that gives you a good kind of three-dimensional grid to build the rest of the car on. Um, I'll do one of those at some point. That's, uh, but if you're just starting out drawing cars, probably side views are probably the best place to start. They're simplest and they do you know, they tell you pretty much everything there is to know about the car. Um, yeah, definitely a good place to start. So now I'm just dropping in a shadow. So shadow is just a, a perspective rect a rectangle rectangle in perspective. So that line that runs under the wheels is now returning to the vanishing point. Same at the back end, and that gives you the angle for the ends of that shadow. A lot of people, when they draw a side view of a car, just roughly put in the shape of the shadow, or just roughly put in the windows on the far side of the you know, um, when you're looking through the glass, things like that, and it's easy. To, uh, to make a mistake, you know, so that so that your shadow perhaps has a slightly different vanishing point than the uh, windows on the far side of the car, and once you've been once you've drawn a few hundred cars from the side, um, you start to notice those, but it might not be apparent to to the person who's done it for the first time. So just dropping dropping in a vanishing point and working with just one vanishing point for your one object is is good practice, and it just means that. Um, the whole drawing will hang together a bit better and your 3D feel will it will work a bit better than just having arbitrarily placed vanishing points. I think I'm just doing a bit of housekeeping, just uh, naming some of these layers so that I know which one I'm going to when I go back to them. Um, what else have I got there? So there's my just trying to work out what layer's doing what. There's the perspective layer. So there's the two-finger tap on that layer and then sliding across the screen to change the transparency. Because I don't want the perspective grid to be too dominant, but it's still visible. I'm just redrawing that far side window on a separate layer or maybe back on the layer with the line drawing. The seats. There's some sort of uh, the wing mirror and the instrument console. That's pretty much the, the basic line drawing done. I think I'll add a bit of detail to the wheels. So here I just duplicated my wheel shape because it wasn't a perfect circle um, and just scaled it down. So this is for the tyres. These lotuses, they've got quite an interesting wheel design, some of them. They've got these sort of quite smooth dished discs, sort of a pair of concentric ones. They're quite nice. So I'm just, yeah, there's my first one. Early cars tend to have fatter tyres than what we're used to these days. Modern profile, low profile tyres came in relatively recently. And, um, I don't know, to me, to my mind, they just don't look right on old cars. People sometimes put 
low profile tires on mustangs and and uh, even lotuses and uh, they just it upsets me a bit they're just not as the designer well the designer didn't know about low profile tires but to me it's just you know that they have tires have a proportion proportion and wheels have a big effect on the overall look of a car and when the car was designed it was done with a certain wheel and tyre combination in mind and to, you can I don't know if you put something with a very narrow slither of tyre on it it just jumps out and looks like something from another era, another era right? it jumps out at me but hey rules are there to be broken aren't they so this line I'm putting in here is to show where the bulge in the tyre would be so if you chopped a if you looked at a tyre from the front you would see it kind of as it's sort of narrow where it attaches to the rim it widens a bit as a sort of bulge then it narrows again when it gets to the uh, tread area so it's quite I like to put that into it when I'm drawing a tyre it's quite a useful way of showing the um, three-dimensional form of a tyre so I've just duplicated all that, all those circles, so I didn't have to draw them again. Um, and I think I flipped them because uh, yeah, the rear wheels and mirror image. I'm just doing a bit more housekeeping here, I think. Uh, renaming layers. Rear wheel, front wheel. Quite like to erase that contact patch with the ground. With the ground, it just helps tie the car into the to the ground plane rather than being a cardboard cutout stuck on top just tidying up a few extra lines like that that waistline that goes goes through my wee front wheel at the work at the moment which isn't so nice and some of that bulge on the front wheel arch I'm taking away as well. So that's what we're we, 20, 20, 22 minutes in and I've got the basic line drawing in. So the rest of this is just kind of noodling around with shading and colouring in. I hope it's interesting enough to watch. I feel like I ought to speed it up. <laughs> I'll try to point out anything interesting I'm doing in Procreate. Um, Oh, there's a, using the perspective grid again and I'm just using it to work out how much I would be able to see of the wheels on the far side again you could just guess this but it's nice to you know if you've got a vanishing point why not use it so that I know the front the front wheels or the, the nearest wheels to us touch that perspective line so the furthest wheels ought to touch it in the same place just further back so it's just uh good way to work out exactly how much of those you should be able to see. Just dropping in that exhaust pipe again. Just darkening a few of these these lines underneath the car where they, it'd be a bit darker under there so it just makes sense to sort of firm some of those up a bit and make them a bit, bit stronger. I'm doing this the same around, just to, this is purely for aesthetic reasons, just trying to balance the sketch, you know, just trying to think what details would look nicer if they were a bit bolder and like the, uh, the shape of the windows and things, you can just emphasise those a bit. I tried shading these rubber bumpers on each end of the car and then decided um, that it's probably best to do that just with a solid colour afterwards. So I think I undo this now. There we are, undo. So I think that's the basic line drawing. So there's a new layer, empty layer, underneath all the others. And just a solid round brush with a grey. And now I can do some colouring in. It's very satisfying. 
the nice thing about colouring in on a separate layer underneath your line drawing is that you you can't go wrong. You can, you, know, you can scribble away. You can still see the line drawing all the time. And uh, if you go over the line slightly, you can erase back to it easily. I suppose I could duplicate the, the line drawing and then use the flood fill tool, but often with flood fill, you on a pencil -y type sketch, you you get areas where it doesn't fill very satisfyingly or cleanly, you know, there's a slight grain or whatever, and it needs a lot of tidy, tidying up again anyway, so I prefer just to colour it in. I'm not really zooming in to to be really fussy about it. Um, I might do a tiny bit of clean up at the end, but it's really it's just a, a loose-ish sketch, so I'm, I'm not fussed if it's not really really crisp and super clean. So I'm erasing here just bits where I did go too far. not much to say at this point other than I'm colouring in a rectangle. <laughs> There's the, the helper tool that I should talked about earlier with the arcs and ellipses. It works on straight lines and other shapes too so you just draw a line, hold it that hold down at the end and it will snap to a nice straight line. So I've uh, used that to give me a nice straight edge to my shadow. So I think I might, what am I going to do for this? There we are, drawing a circle, holding it till it sharpens up. And then I can flood fill there. So you see it's very quick, I did it quite quick, but if you drag that colour icon from the very top right corner of your screen into an area, it will flood fill with that colour. I'll probably do the same thing here. I'll draw a circle. Actually, ended up not waiting for it to clean up this time. I just drew it as best I could freehand. So you see, it's quite loose close up. So I think that's all the shaded, shaded areas. Oh no steering wheel. I'm not a great expert when it comes to rendering cars. I'm, I'm a big fan of um, car design, car designers illustrations and I love all the different styles that they've used over the years um, but I've never actually been taught any of them so I just look at them and um, have a go at them myself um, and it's so there'd be a lot of uh, this source at this point there's just a lot of experimenting and a lot of head scratching and just trying things out seeing what I like what doesn't what I don't like um, so yeah you'll have to bear with me as I dither a lot so I've made the background slightly darker. Oh, trying to draw on a hidden layer. Um, by making the background a grey rather than perfect white, that will 
as you can see, allow me to use a lighter coloured airbrush over the top and pick out some highlights. It's like using toned grey paper or something. So you could do this with grey paper and some chalk or some pastel. And you see this, I've borrowed this technique from uh, Adam Gomputz, who uses pastels and um, and he just puts, does a lovely line drawing and then puts this, just a smudge of pastel over the top very, very lightly. And it often overruns the, you know, the, the, car, the ends of the car. It just, it's just loosely in the right place. Um, it's where it needs to be, I suppose. And it, it just works so beautifully. It's such a simple way of bringing out the form of a car. Um, without too much bother, really. So it's, it's very, very effective. So I put just a, a quick airbrush, white airbrush stroke over the top half of the car where it'd be lighter. And then I erased up to the waistline because it's a defined crease, it's not a gentle curve. So I, I wanted to make sure that it looked like a crease and not a curve. So now I've just, on a separate layer again, used a darker airbrush and just darkened the very bottom edge of the door the bottom edge of the car just so it looks like it's curving into the shadow slightly. Now I'm wondering what to do next. <laughs> I'm thinking hmm, 70s cars. 70s cars are usually exciting colours. Gold. <laughs> so uh, I'm thinking that probably ought to add some colour or something to that. Although I might do some, uh, I think before I do the colour, I'm just thinking about the highlights. Again, this is another area where I need to study a bit more. Scott Robertson's book on rendering goes into brilliant detail on exactly where you'd find highlights and reflections and shadows. Um, and I, I read it every now and again and then it goes in and then it sinks out of my brain again and I have to read it again. <laughs> so at the moment, You've caught me in one of those times when I can't remember where highlights would appear and I'm just sort of looking at the reference photos trying to work, see where it naturally seems to catch highlights. Um, I'm putting a few in myself. You can easily get carried away with these because pure white dots of you know, highlights, um, they look very exciting, they really make the picture pop until you, get, you until you add too many of them and then suddenly you realise you've overdone it and it it looks messy. So the the skill is just to use a few in places that really need it. But I will um I will study the book again and see if I can work out what the formula is for where they should appear. <laughs> I think I've just gonna started a separate layer underneath my line drawing because um, I realised there's quite a lot of chrome around the windows and things which could do with just being brought out a bit. So I've, I'm just colouring in chrome areas with a bit of almost white, like the filler cap and things. Windows often have a, a chrome surround and that's it's kind of a good way of picking out quite a distinctive part of the car's design. Lots more head scratching going on. Maybe this is where I'm thinking about colour. It's still highlights. <laughs> All right, just picking out the edge of the door. The windscreen's very shiny surface. I 
bit unsure about how to simply render those sort of double dished wheels. I didn't want to, you know, with it, with, it, with it being quite a simple sketch, I didn't want to go into a full on perfect rendering of them because that would just look crazy with too much detail. So I just, I was just trying to work out what's the bare minimum I could do to make them look roughly like they do in real life, but without doing too much, you know, just, just, so I decided I'd put just a pair of little highlights at the bottom and then later on a, a shadow towards the top. I decided that filler cap was just sort of too in your face, so I just erased the bottom half of it to look like a reflection of the, the horizon. Back to the basic airbrush tool. Uh, just to add a bit of shape to that filler cap area. front wheel arch is one of those funny areas where um, I need to study Scott's book again because <laughs> it is although it's the top of the bulge is sort of pointing up towards where the light would be for some reason on the reference pictures it looks to go darker um, maybe because it's reflecting the bodywork behind it or something else it's a bit peculiar so it kind of does the opposite to what you think would happen so I sort of ummed and ahed a bit and was never quite sure what looked right. Just using the colour picker tool. Once, once you've got quite far with any sketch, you tend to have quite a range of colours and f shades on your screen. So you can just use that as a as a palette by pressing and holding your finger on the screen. It will pick that colour that's under your finger. So you don't need to go up to the palette in the corner anymore. So I'm just working out how bright these these wheel centers need to be. Just erasing, as I said, there's two dishes, one inside the other. So I was just erasing that, the join between the two. Again, that, that helper tool, the, the one that does ellipses and arcs and straight lines, works with your eraser too. It's really useful.
up. So I've got the center of the wheel done. And now that I've got this shape, I'm going to the layer. You see I swiped it to the right with two fingers. That locks the transparency of the layer. So everything on that layer that hasn't got anything drawn on it will be masked off, basically. Um, and I can only draw in the areas that have something drawn on them already. <coughs> So I've decided that the wheel was just a bit too bright, so I picked a slightly darker grey and scribbled over the bit that I'd already drawn on, and it went darker. So it's a really useful tool, the, um, the uh, I think it's called Mask Transparency. I'll just check, see what it's called. Alpha Lock. It's called on this one. You can do the same in Photoshop and it, they call it something different. I can't remember what. The main thing to remember is just if you swipe your layer with two fingers to the right, you'll see it just, um, you'll see a sort of checkered background appear behind your drawing. And that means that that area is locked and uh, preserved from being drawn on again until you swipe it again. Um, and it's a really useful thing for changing colours of things, drawing patterns on objects, you know, it's really good. So here I'm just working out, still trying to work out the best way to render those wheel centres without putting too much detail in. I decided that it looked quite good with a sort of cast shadow off the wheel arch. Once I settled on the idea of a uh, shadow being cast on the top part, top part of the wheel centre, I was just trying to work out what angle worked best. Did it look, you know, did it look more conical if I angled the edges in slightly? And did it look better if it had a slight step when you got to the outer rim? I think I decided it was just that was just too much detail for for the wheel and just kept it quite simple. See when I'm zooming out like that it's uh, the equivalent of taking a few steps back and looking at your artwork from from the other side of the room. Um, sometimes it just helps to to uh, see which bits are jumping out and don't look right. So having done all that work on the front rim I duplicated it and flipped it horizontally, moved it to the back, saved a bit of time, still just needs to tweak the position. I think there's the flip horizontal there. It fits a bit better because if you remember the wheels weren't perfect circles, they're slight ellipses. I'm just doing a bit of housekeeping, merging layers down. I've got quite a few layers that are just called layer one, layer two. I'm just trying to remember what they were and merge things down. So there's a one layer for all the lines. See that pinch? If you pinch layers together, even if it's quite a few, they merge. So I'm just pinching two together to merge them into one and renaming them. So that's the lines. There's the shading, the lower shading, the highlights. That's the initial rough sketch. It's always worth keeping, you never know why. Here's the highlights, the tiny little specks of pure white. You see if you hide the lines, you can already start to see the car working without any line work. And if you wanted to go for a photorealistic look, then eventually you'd hope to 
remove all the lines altogether. So I'm just importing um, a piece of grey card that I scanned because um, computer pictures can look very clean. Sometimes you want that, but often they're just a bit too clean and clinical. Um, so I've imported a piece of scanned grey card um, and put it into overlay mode. So And then overlay mode allows sort of certain areas of your dark, you know, your, your picture to show through whether they're dark or light. Um, and so I've just used that just to bring a bit of paper texture into it and make it a bit more interesting in the there are lots of blank areas where there's nothing going on there's no gradient there's nothing happening so it just adds a bit of interest to those and makes it feel a bit more sort of naturalistic I suppose so they're just taking the opacity down so it's not too strong I also grouped all of the drawing layers into one group to make it easier to reposition them on the page because they were a bit off to one side so I just repositioned them more in the centre. So I'm just getting my pencil tool. I think I'd finished. I thought I'd finished. <laughs> so I signed it. So I decided it might look better if the signature filled in some of the empty space around the car. I think maybe this is the point where I was wondering about adding a bit more colour. It works quite nicely just as a you know, in grey tones, but um, like I said earlier, I think just seventies were a good time for bright, crazy colours and cars, and uh, seemed a bit of a shame not to do to have a go at some. just spotted a few extra details that I'd missed the first time round in the line drawing. So there are a few sort of square raised areas on that uh, window frame. Just scrutinising it, wondering if there's anything else that jumps out as me, uh, jumped out, jumps out as being wrong. duplicated um, I've decided that the front of the front edge of the door is probably too far forward but I wasn't sure if if I was going to make a mess of it so I duplicated my line layer so I could go back to it if I wanted to before erasing the front of the door need to erase the highlight too Now I can redraw it in the correct place. It was just a little bit too far forward the first time. That looks a bit better. Just replace the highlight. area above the wheel arch is still troubling me obviously. So 
bit more tidying up. Deleted the spare line layer because I'm happy with the new door. Uh, I just noticed on one of the uh, reference photos the car had a great sort of uh, tint to the screens, to the glass. Another good 70s thing. Green tinted windows. So I'm doing this on a separate layer. That way I can always undo it and vary the strength. I just want this green to be everywhere where there's glass. And now with a two finger tap, you can change the opacity of that layer strength of the green where you want it. And now that the blue's in there I'm thinking maybe the rest of the car is dominating the sketch a bit. So back to the airbrush and let's get some sort of browny gold colours see how that works. It balances out the green of the windows quite nicely. And now more golden yellow colour for the highlights. This is all underneath the, the white airbrushed highlight area. Uh, layer, so it, you know that 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 still works and has an effect. I'm just sort of adding a, a tint beneath it. As I said earlier, this is sort of definitely some an area where I need more practice, and so I'm, so there's lots of switching things on and off and seeing um, has it improved things or has it made things worse. Does it read better or worse? You know, it's uh, very much a trial and error process. Just using the curves tool there on the shadow layer just to see now that they've got these strong colours in there whether I need to beef up the contrast a bit of the darker areas. So I have to, a little bit but I uh, haven't gone crazy. Just a small amount, I didn't go right to black or anything like that. So there was a two finger 
duplicating this just in case I go badly wrong. <laughs> it's always something, a sign that I'm going to experiment with something. And then I did the two finger swipe to um, for the alpha lock. So now I can add some 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 variation to the shadow area. I'm spraying a bit of sort of dark brown into those greys just to sort of just bring a bit of life into them. At the moment it's just one flat grey tone and just a, a hint of brown in there seems to have just made them a bit more interesting to look at. Really sure what I'm looking for here. I'm sort of switching the layers on and off. And I'm still worrying about the uh, top of the front wheel arch. Add a bit more brown into the shadows. I just duplicated the lines there just to see how it would look if the line work was a bit bolder. With all the airbrush work it's started to get uh, a bit lost so I just thought firming those lines up helped. And there we are, I think that's pretty much it. Just having a quick look at the time lapse. Later on I just added, I felt it looked just a bit too clean and not quite contrasty enough so after this part I did just add a few extra bolder lines, a bit looser, sketchier lines and beefed up the, um, the gold colours slightly just to get a bit more punch to it. Um, so that's the picture you'll see at the very end. Hope you've enjoyed watching the, uh, the process, it's quite a steady process. But, um, oh, you might have learnt a few Procreate tips and things along the way. And uh, if you did enjoy it, leave a comment and uh, I'll do some more. <laughs>